Today's lesson is a quick introduction with some detail uh, hints and tips and tricks for the product and inventory section, mainly the inventory section. First of all, uh, there's a button that says over here inventory and for that you do need to have uh, something set available. If we go for, to the admin section, application wide shared features, system settings, there's a section that speaks about the inventory over here. And this one needs to be uh, set up correctly. We did this one already in a, in a previous item. I just wanted to make sure that it's all been set up. It is indeed enabled with the, the settings. And uh, one thing is very common to over here is that require approval before ordering cold products is set to a value of $5,000. What I wanted you to show with here is that by setting this, uh, this dollar amount here, you can approve purchase orders. Where do you do that? There's an inventory, there's purchase approvals. And right now, there's nothing in there. There's nothing to approve and reject because there's nothing that is, has a value of, uh, of $5,000. If you would quote a product that's above that $5,000 or whatever limit that you set there, it will come into here. And then uh, that from there, you can uh, approve that purchase. How to create a purchase order from here once it's been approved and uh, that further process is all being done in separate lessons. Here, I just wanted to make you aware that there's a purchase approval section. Um, if you leave this uh, value over here to zero, it may be a good one, then you never need an approval. There may be only a couple of people involved in your company. Leave it to zero, and then uh, there's no approvals required. Now, one thing that's in the admin section as well is a good thing to see is that there is a, um, under the products, services, and inventory, a separate section, and there are purchase order templates. So the pick list and the pack list in the system are default systems. You can't change them, but there's a uh, purchase order template that you can change. Again, there's a little hamburger menu and you can say, let's copy one and make it uh, your own default. We make it the different defaults and we leave everything in place, but we can make some modification that we do it, for example, on an A4. Uh, we want to change the PDF uh, format name. We can change it also over here. And those are the little bit things that you can uh, modify. You press save. Now this one is made the new, uh, the new active one. And that gives you kind of the same screen as maybe what you've seen already in the lessons for your uh, invoice te templates and for your quote templates. This kind of works the same thing too. So I don't have to go in too much detail. I uh, just wanted to show you where it is. You can change the header by clicking on edit. You can change the top of the purchase order by going into edit and push order button in edit. And also here. So once you have uh, more knowledge about doing changing the quote templates and changing the, the invoice templates, then probably at that time you will be working on the purchase order templates, and that's going to be pretty simple. Of course, you need a little bit more explanation. We can always help you. Go to our Facebook group, and I'll be happy to show you how to further edit this particular one. Make sure that at the end you always press the save and close button to make sure that's being saved. And now you have the auto test default. You have the different default, and now you have more options. And now you can make this one. As your default as well. Another setting that I want you to show you in this section too, there's of course the, the purchasing and fulfillment and these couple of items I'm going to show you into more, uh, more detail. The one that I can also show you purchase order history, but again it will be popping up in, uh, in, uh, in other lessons. You see there's a couple of items already in here, but what I want you to show you is if I go to inventory and I go to purchasing and fulfillment, Right now, there's already an item that's being showed as needing to be purchased. If you say, hey, I don't need this one, I can select this one, and there's a button, Bypass Procurement for Selected Items. Sometimes you don't need to buy it through a purchase order. You either way have it already in stock, or there's another reason why you don't need to buy it. And there's, the system gives you there an option to bypass the procurement. Now, by default, that is not a system setting that is being turned on. I'm going to show you a separate page where I can show you that on the, in this case, the security level, even the system administrator, by default, it's not on, but I had to enable this checkbox over here that says other permissions under the inventory section that says can bypass procurement. And I do recommend the person, if you guys are going to work with the inventory, the person who's going to work with the inventory to have this particular button available because there's some items you do need to do indeed uh, do a bypass the procurement. So make sure that you enable this on the person that does the, the inventory, the purchasing, Press save and close, make sure that it is here. And that once the user gets out of the system uh, to log back in, and then that feature is enabled. And then once here's items listed, 
then you can do the bypass procurement for those selected items. It's a straightforward process. It basically tells you that it will cancel the purchase order for that. There's no purchase order to be needed. And right away, the ships and deliver the items to a particular client. I think that's all for a general overview of all the items that are in the inventory model with, uh, with a couple of uh, tips and tricks. Uh, the inventory items and transplant updates, this is all being explained in different, uh, different items. Make sure, of course, you have the products as set as an inventory item, then, then you can use them in this module. There's the approvals and fulfillment, this is all being explained in separate lessons. And in the end, you still also have the reports section, uh, where's down the inventory. You can uh, export even purchase orders to XML. Um, and that's kind of a little bit basic, as you can see, it's nothing here, and the global note search. So reporting section for inventory is very limited, be aware of that. Uh, it's also difficult to track inventory if you have an initial count, and uh, then you have some modifications. Uh, apparently that the initial count is not being um, used into the, to the inventory uh, tracking, so be aware to, to really maintain that inventory in the correct way, also do physical inventory checks. You can easily modify the inventory, but it's not a full-blown inventory system that has a perfect tracking and you can see all the uh, all the reports There's not too much reports we can do them in live reports but again that would be a separate lesson and that's it for a good high level overview of the inventory module that is in autodesk and uh, I, would, I would strongly suggest also to look at those other lessons that we have in here that gives you more guidance on how to do the purchase orders how to use the fulfillment section and do the whole delivery and shipment including pick list and pack list once you show all the videos, you will get a good grasp of how the system works and how you can uh, make sure that it will benefit your company in a good way. Thank you for watching this lesson. Any questions, go to our Facebook group and post a comment there. Thank you.